Hi everyone, it's Natasha Saunders, your Veterans Career Coach. I hope you have been well. I'm excited to be able to record this um, lecture on a variety of topics. Um, some of the topics that I plan to include are interviewing, LinkedIn, and networking. Um, and I hope that you find some of these tips helpful for you and maybe even some of your classmates. So let's begin. So this session aims to deliver a few things. I'm going to um, give you some thoughts or share some thoughts in light of everything that's going on in our environment um, today and what I'm doing to pause and reflect. I'm going to remind you of some resources that are available at Brown. I'm going to share a little word about personal branding. Um, I'm going to demonstrate an elevator pitch, or I should say give you the framework for one, and then talk about networking, LinkedIn, and virtual interviews, and then I will pause there. So let's jump right in. Um, you know, I, I think about some of the things that have been very instrumental to me when I have gone through some really challenging times. And I remember one season in particular where things were extremely challenging from family to health to wealth to academics. Everything was just coming down at me all at once. And I don't know how I came across this book, but this book is amazing. And it's called Three Feet From Gold. And it's been one of the most monumental books to date for me, and I've read a lot of books, a lot of career professional development books. But if you can kind of just think of the vision three feet from gold and how someone could be so close to making it to the end, but they don't quite get there. Um, and there's a lot of obstacles in the way of that person making it to the gold. And so there's a lot of life principles in this book that I think would be amazing and helpful. So I would encourage you that even with everything going on right now, that maybe you take a pause and take some time to just reflect and think about where you've been and what you've already accomplished and the people that have supported you along the way and you know maybe even some people that were with you a year ago and they're no longer with you today i know that i lost a very 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 close mentor of mine um my longest mentor um the mentor that i shared the most with like i didn't make any academic career personal life family decision without talking to this person. And he came into my life um, at a time when my own brother had passed away. And so I became really attached to him. And um, now he's gone. And I am still reeling from that. I'm trying to process that. Um, and so we may all face some challenges, whether we want to or not, but sometimes we just need to take a pause reflect on where we are, and think of something good about the person that we're missing. And so that's what I've been doing to carry me along, along with reading this book, Three Feet from Gold. Now, let's change tone a little bit and jump right into what you came for today. Brown University. Now, when we're talking about interviewing and networking, um, I want to just make sure that you remember to log on to the Career Lab page because there are so many resources in Career Lab and Handshake that I find helpful even when coaching students. So please make sure that you are checking Career Lab, that you're signing up for the programs that they offer, even virtual. I do virtual coaching, but so does the Career Lab. They offer amazing virtual coaching as well. Lots of templates, lots of handouts. Um, ways to connect with alumni. Now, speaking about Brown alumni, um, as you know, there are tons of alumni on LinkedIn, but as a veterans mentoring program, 
we have a page on LinkedIn where I post things, Johanna posts things, some of your peers post things. So please make sure that you are a member of that group. And you know what? If you come across some interesting information that you don't mind sharing with your colleagues and your peers, please post it in the group. It's a great place to connect with people and see what's going on. All right, so let's jump into a word about personal brand. Now, I would imagine you've heard this term frequently. You've heard the word branding. What is it? What is it not? One of my favorite definitions of personal brand is brands are built on what people are saying about you and not what you are saying about yourself. Now, I know that can go, you know, either which way. Well, Natasha, I want to control what people think about me. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you're, you can't. And so if someone says, hey, Tasha is so inspiring, she's motivational, then that helps my brand. But if I say I'm motivating and inspirational, that's okay, but it doesn't carry as much weight. So I want you to start thinking about the positive things that people have said about you and maybe some of the skills that people have identified. And they're like, wow, you're really good at this. So you're really awesome at that. Just jot it down and make a note might be helpful as you start to think about what is your personal brand and what exactly have you been known for and what do you want to be known for? Networking. So I have an example here of a pitch that is um, kind of framed for you already. And I know a lot of you sometimes say, well, Tasha, how do I answer the question? Tell me about yourself. Now, a lot of coaches have different philosophies on this question, um, but I would say start with you. Like, what is it that you want me to know that we may or may not cover in the actual interview or in the conversation? For example, I know already that we're going to talk about your work history, um, we're going to talk about education, but maybe you traveled to an amazing country and while you were there, you had an epiphany. And that's what sparked your interest and in why you want to go down this particular career track. Or maybe last week you participated in a food drive and while you were there, you thought of something and it, it kind of just honed in on you and it's something that um, will never leave you. It's okay to throw in a little anecdote of something like that. It's still professional, but it's personal, but it tells us a little bit about who you are, your character, your ethics, your morals, your values, your interests, your personality. Those are important. And so with the pitch, you have a template here that you can look through when you're ready. But basically it's, you know, I have a certain amount of experience in a particular field, your expertise is in this, um, your time at Brown has prepared you for what, right? Because as there's that before Brown, the during Brown and what you would like to do after. Um, there's the, also I put in a little note about, you know, that you've had the pleasure of learning alongside, meaning, you have sat in some classes with some amazing peers from all over the globe who study a variety of disciplines. You've learned with some amazing faculty members who have achieved some great feats. And so when you think about like your experience, it's okay to think about who else have you sat beside of? You worked in amazing team projects with individuals from A and B. And so that's something different that you could add to your pitch that you don't hear often. And so there's some other tools as far as if you decide you want to go through your pitch, please feel free to look through the slide. All right, next up. So one of my favorite books of all time is called The Little Black Book of Connections by Jeffrey Gittimer. I love him so much so that I follow him on LinkedIn. So much so that I tagged him and let him know that I was going to be mentioning his book because it's one of my favorites. Now, you don't have to purchase it right away if that's not feasible. Maybe it's something that the library offers, but it's a really good short read that I keep going back to because sometimes networking is not always easy for people because it's like, well, I don't want to ask for something. I don't know you to ask for something. And sometimes you just need a little pick-me-up, a little encouragement, some detailed strategies that might help you. I find this book really helpful because it really thinks about 
rich relationships, not when it comes to monetary. So it's like if you are passionate about policy, you're passionate about IT and security, maybe you're passionate about hospitality. At the end of the day, networking is really building these relationships with other people that have similar interests as yours. So if you pull back that big word networking and just focus on you know what, I wanna start building relationships with people that are doing what I might want to do. They've done some really great things. They're in a field that I respect. And so I wanna to try to reach out and talk to some people about what they've done and how did they do it and how was their um, career impacted by what's going on now and what classes do they remember taking in college that was really helpful to them or you know, did they make any mistakes in their career? If they could do it again, would they still be in the same field? Or, you know, what skills have they used in their job that surprised them that they didn't think they would have to know or use in that job? And so it's a really great opportunity to ask those types of questions. So when I think about mastering the art of networking, I really think about you coming up with your own definition of what that looks like. You don't have to have me or someone else tell you exactly what your style of networking should be, but take some time to think about how you define networking. How do you like to engage with people? So right now, yes, a lot of the engagement is all virtual uh, because we are social distancing. However, in that engagement, do you prefer phone? Do you prefer video? If you prefer video, are you a Skype person? Are you a Zoom person? Are you a FaceTime person? Are you a WhatsApp person? Um, or would you just rather send an email and get your answers answered through email? So think about your preferred preference when it comes to engagement. Are you confident in your delivery? I think that in the delivery of your elevator pitch, which we covered in the previous slide, it is worth practicing. Record yourself on your phone and play it back and see what you sound like, or maybe ask a friend to listen to you. I definitely think it would be helpful if we're constantly practicing our delivery. Is your pitch crafted to perfection? It will be after you practice. And what is the purpose of you doing so? Sometimes if you scale back, oh my gosh, networking, networking. Well, at the end of the day, what is your purpose for it? Like, what does your heart say? Well, I wanna meet executives who do this and that because I'm interested in, you know, maybe this is what I might wanna do, but I'm not sure yet. And I need to hear a little, a few stories to help me decide if this is the track that I wanna go down. So a lot of times people ask me questions, I think I wanna do this, I think I wanna do that, maybe I wanna do this. And then I'll say, well, can you please tell me how many people you actually had a conversation with that do this? Can you tell me how many alum you actually read their blog posts that they freely post on LinkedIn about what it is they do? Or could you tell me how many times you watched a TED Talk video on YouTube about this particular profession? And then can you decide what it is you might want to try? Even if you're not, let's say, uh, solidified, like this is exactly what I wanna do right now then maybe just consider, well, Natasha, there's a few areas. So I'm gonna explore one at a time. I always tell people, you know, I remember in undergrad, I was three majors I loved, fashion, fitness, and finance. And you know what I still kind of do? I just did one at a time. So it's something to think about. All right, so eight strategic ways to master networking. Now these are Tasha's tips. Maybe you'll alter them, tweak them, you know, think about what may work for you. The first is begin with a vision. So I had asked in the previous slide, what is your purpose for networking? When you start thinking about your own vision, where do you envision yourself? What do you, where do you hope to work? You know, what type of organization? Is it an organization that gives back to the community and they make social impact? Is it you wanna sit in front of a terminal and sell stocks and bonds? Do you see yourself doing that? Or do you see yourself speaking to an audience? Do you see yourself being more hands-on? You have to determine what that vision looks like for you. Where are you? What are you doing? What type of impact or influence do you have? Who's in the room with you? You know, start thinking about those things. Assessing your surroundings and capability. Basically, 
times have adjusted, right? We have to adjust to where we are right now. But when you think about your surroundings, are you at school or are you at home? If you're at home, do you have an environment where you feel comfortable that you can talk and share and grow and network? Or do you have to find a little maybe in the bathroom where you can shut the door and do a quick talk? In my place where I live, and I've recommended this for students, when I'm gonna do a video, or I know I'm gonna have an important conversation, I put a sign on the door that says, live recording, interview in process, in big letters, and I tape it on the door. So if somebody comes to the door, at least they'll pause and say, oh, I forgot Tasha's in a conversation right now. Let me not knock on this door. And so you do have to start thinking about your surroundings and really having a comfortable space to work in. What does that space look like for you? Um, not everyone has a desk in their home. Can you clear off a table? The next thing is to think about the methodology, whether that's phone, email, or virtual video. Um, that's until we're able to actually meet people face to face. That may be your preferred methodology and worth considering as well. Um, thinking about your tribe and what that means. So basically your tribe is, for me, I'm an African-American female with an MBA. So my tribe could be, let's see, the Black MBA Association. Or my tribe is my Greek-lettered uh, sorority organization that's also full of thousands and thousands of African-American women. And so whatever your tribe is, it's not to say that we can't cross over because we do all the time. Maybe I have a tribe that's focused on women in government, right? Or maybe there's a tribe of veterans professionals, right? So there's so many different tribes. My goal is sometimes it's easier to reach out to someone in your tribe first before you cross out. So just consider it, think about it. Um, the next is offer identity tools, design your follow-up game, and the signature trademark. So this is what I mean by um, decide what you will offer. A lot of times students say, well, you know, Tasha, um, I don't really have anything to offer. I'm a student. And then I'll say, let's peel that onion back just a little bit on that you don't have anything to offer because we all have something to offer. What if you said something like, hmm, if I was making a pitch to have a conversation. And I would say, you know, I'm really excited to speak with you because of the following reasons. I'm perhaps looking at maybe um, going down that line professionally. In exchange for this conversation, should I find that someone in my network could help you in any way, I would be happy to make an introduction. That's it. You just offer that maybe if you learn something about this person, that you would offer an introduction to someone else. That's something that you could essentially offer. Or maybe you find that in the conversation, this person, in addition to the position you're applying for or interested in, maybe they have some volunteer opportunities that came up because they are big on corporate social responsibility. And you say, you know what? I have some classmates and some peers and I'm gonna send this information to our career office because maybe that's something I can offer you. I can uh, have them post this on their database and maybe other students might volunteer for this initiative. Or maybe it's an alum, right? And the alum graduated quite a few years ago. And your offer could be, you know, based on how our conversation goes, I'm sure I'm gonna learn some amazing things. And when that, you know, comes to pass and should it happen, I would love to share this information with my classmates. Or better yet, maybe I'll reconnect you with one of the professors that's still on campus. I'm sure they would love to hear from you. So you see, there's a few things you technically could offer. I feel like if you're gonna get something from someone, you should think about how you can give back. Even if you don't make the introduction yet, maybe in the future you will. The next is to identi identify your tools. Excuse me, that should say identify your tools. I'll make that a correction. So when it comes to tools, I'm thinking about Handshake, the alumni database, LinkedIn, whatever those tools are. Design your follow-up game. Um, you know, with the follow-up game, it's like you want to just follow up with people, make a note, send a thank you note, um, you know, maybe put it in your agenda that in six months from now or three months from now, you're going to follow up and see how they're doing. 
I remember I had gotten um, rejected from a program that I really wanted in on at, and I just remember thinking why I got rejected, is this it? You know what, I crafted a letter to thank them for the rejection. Needless to say, a week later, I saw that institution all over my LinkedIn profile as if they were looking at my profile. And then a few days later, I got invited to apply to the same program that I was rejected, first of all, because they said they didn't have a seat and they couldn't pay for me to attend the program because I wanted to attend the program and get a scholarship. And they said, listen, if you submit your materials and we'll see what we can do, we might have an opening. Well, Friday, end of business, I get an email. There's an opening. I get the seat. I walk in class Sunday like I'd applied like everybody else. And so the follow-up game is important because maybe you're thanking someone for the rejection and you're letting them know that you will keep your eyes open for other opportunities that could be a better fit. You just never know when it might be beneficial. The last is trademark. So in different times, I might um, have a trademark of like, for example, I like to give my mentors Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Just $3, not anything like a lot for me. Now that could be a lot for some, depending. In my situation, I could do it. $3, $5, no more than that though. But if I had a really amazing conversation, I gave them that Dunkin' Donuts gift card. And I remember one of my now mentors, as soon as he gets the mail, he's like, ooh, that's my Dunkin' Donuts gift card. And so it's definitely something to think about whatever your trademark is gonna be. Um, now my trademark is a little bit different, right? Because of social distancing. So I'm not really going out to get the Dunkin' Donuts gift card. But about two weeks ago, I had a really amazing conversation with someone. And in exchange for that conversation, my trademark was I actually wrote them a testimonial on LinkedIn. It wasn't anything super long, but it just talked about how engaging the dialogue was and how helpful um, the advice was in moving me forward. That's all I said. But that person was so appreciative that I put that publicly on their LinkedIn profile. So now that's part of my trademark. LinkedIn. So this is something that I would say we definitely should work one-on-one -on -one with, um, whether it's myself, whether it's the Career Lab, and really looking at your particular profile. However, um, there's a few things I just wanted to remind you, like the key things of having a really great photo, having a great headline. Um, and with the headline, I actually have an example of one that I really like. Um, so when you're thinking about your headline, you know, it's really case by case. Sometimes you could just put your job title, like I have my job title, I'm a full-time doctoral student as well. So it works for me right now. Sometimes I change it out. It just depends if I have a big speaking engagement and I need to kind of alter my brand a little bit. So it's case by case. Sometimes if you're a student, I'll see students say student at so-and-so. But the gist is while you're a student and you're learning, you're still vying for internships, you're trying to do volunteer opportunities, you're trying to set yourself up for a full-time job. So you might want to be a little bit more specific than the, the fact that you're a student. So one, uh, two examples that I have for you is I remember someone had, was really passionate about policy. They were really passionate about labor and education, and they were published in a journal. And so that person's headline focused on policy with a line, labor in education with a line, and then published in the Journal of Education. So basically it's like, oh, this is a policy person they're interested in labor and education, and they were already published. I might wanna contact this person. Another example is someone that's in human resources, right? So this person put human resources, and then they put policies and procedures because that's their specialty. Um, or it could be hiring and recruiting. And then on the other end of that, it said nonprofit because that's the sector that they focus on. And then they put like a 1% turnover, meaning if you work with me and I hire and recruit with you, our people are sustained and they stay. So once again, human resources, this person's interested in procedures, this person is interested in the nonprofit sector, and they had a 1% turnover for the people that they've hired. So you'll see the difference, policy, labor, and education published in a journal of education. Those are just like four things that you can put in that subject line instead of just saying that I'm a student. So at least recruiters, employers, and alumni know what you're looking for. 
I think that that's a very big piece of the LinkedIn profile. And typically, if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with myself or with someone in the career lab, we could really work through your LinkedIn profile more carefully. But just be mindful of that heading. Be mindful of having a full summary about yourself, an, an accomplishment or two that you're proud of. What are you looking to get into? What sector or industry really drives you? And why do you want to do the work that you do? I think that information is really important in a summary. In the experience section, um, you know, you can list where you've worked, maybe three or four bullets explaining what you've done at that job. You have your education section, your volunteer section, skills. You know, one thing about the skills section I will mention is start pulling some of the job descriptions and internship descriptions of roles that you have an interest in, okay? Pull those descriptions and then look for the skills in the description that they say you need to have like communication, leadership, management, um, SPSS, Microsoft Excel. Look at those skills. If you see there are things in common, like, wow, these three or four or five positions that I'm looking at all require the same skill set. Then maybe on the bottom of your LinkedIn profile, you go down there and look at the skills section and make that more tailored to where you'd like to head. So once again, if you want to work on your LinkedIn profile, that's something that we can do in an appointment. Um, we'll also look at the Brown University's page, which is so important because literally there's an alumni tab and you can sort the alumni based on what states they live in, what industries they live in, what fields they work in, and it's extremely helpful. Um, and the last piece, remember I mentioned in the previous slide that my trademark is giving recommendations? It's something to consider. It's important to have on your page, but it's also important to consider recommending others. For example, if you ask for a recommendation or you give one, consider categorizing them. What I mean is maybe you did a team project with a classmate and they're also on LinkedIn. And you could say, you know what, can you write me a very short recommendation? Just a couple of lines. Focus on what it was like to work on a team with me. That's categorization. Maybe somebody heard you make a presentation and they said, oh my gosh, you were great. It was so informative. You spoke so eloquently. Maybe that's a recommendation. It's very specific about your ability to deliver presentations. Maybe you had an internship or a volunteer opportunity where you did some research, right? You did some research, you pulled articles from peer reviewed journals, you wrote up a report. That is something that that former supervisor could recommend you for on LinkedIn. So when we go back to the first slide, right? When I talked about personal branding and branding being what other people are saying about you, consider these recommendations because this is good content from a social media standpoint, but it's also evidence in an interview. Typically, when you're giving evidence in an interview about what you've accomplished, everyone is so focused on, I did this and I did that and I did this. But imagine if it's, I did this, and I remember my supervisor complimenting me on the following, right? It gives a little bit more oomph to that recommendation.